live from Jacksonville, this is WTEB 47 News at 6.30. The countdown to NSYNC's Pop Odyssey concert is on, and excited fans are ready for tonight's big show. NSYNC's Pop Odyssey 2001 Worldwide Tour kicks off in about an hour at Alltel. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russell Motley. And I'm Beverly Brooks. The first of 45 shows is in Jacksonville. WTEV 47's Carl Torb joins us now where the excitement has begun. And Carl, the concert gets underway in just an hour. But what's happening out there right now? Beverly, they just opened the gates. People are starting to go in. This place is starting to get a little bit crazy. You can see all these NSYNC fans behind me. Several of them are gathered to see their favorite band. You guys are here to see B.B. Mac, right? B.B. Mac? Yeah! Okay. What, what's the other band that's here tonight? NSYNC. NSYNC. We have, who, who's the favorite NSYNC guy? Who it is? Justin. Justin. JC. JC. That's the first person I've heard not say Justin. Good for you. There's other people in that NSYNC band, aren't there? Anyway, 40,000 fans expected here at Alltel Stadium for the big show. We had a chance to meet with a few of them here today. People say I'm having fun and that's all that matters. I love NSYNC and I don't care if people know about it. I hear it so much I have to like it. So I like the music. NSYNC Glow Eyes photos! NSYNC Glow Eyes photos passes! Now it's time to leave and make it up. All right, if you can't afford a ticket to the show, I think that was the next best thing right there. Uh, they're not going to stop, I don't think. Anyway, NSYNC Mania here at Altel Stadium. I'm Carl Torp, WTEV 47 News. WTEV 47 on patrol responded to an accident along Interstate 95 in St. John's County. The Florida Highway Patrol says the driver of this car, Aaron Maloach from Canada, was going south on I-95 when he lost control. The FHP says he crossed over the median into the northbound lanes and ran underneath a semi. A passenger, Brett Fields, also from Canada, was thrown from the car and died at the scene. Another passenger received minor injuries. Maloach was airlifted to Shands, Jacksonville, where he is in critical condition. The driver of the semi was not hurt. A massive search to find a missing swimmer has been suspended. Aaron Wade was last seen near the jetties where the St. John's River enters into the ocean. Wade and his friend Patty Ryder began their boating trip near the sea turtle at Atlantic Beach. They tethered themselves to the boat to take a swim but something went terribly wrong. The two were tethered to the boat, but the current at the jetties pulled them away. And the waves were pretty large, washing over their heads. They became separated during the time they were swimming together. They communicated by shouting to each other at that point. And then uh, after the, uh, the survivor washed up onto the north jetty, she no longer saw her friend. Aaron's colleague, Patty, managed to make it to shore. Passing boater out between the jetties, saw a woman waving her arms frantically. We, uh, about 15 minutes later, arrived on scene. The U.S. Coast Guard has even called on the Navy and park rangers to help with the search, centered at Little Talbot Island near Huguenot Park. He loved his mother. He's just purchased a home recently for his mom. And um, I've gone to him for quite a while. My whole family has. And he and my daughter were very, very close. The U.S. Coast Guard tried to locate Wade for nearly 12 hours before suspending the search. Two shootings late last night left two men dead. The first happened at this house on West 33rd Street on the north side. Police tell us two men entered this home around 1130 last night and confronted the homeowner, 71-year-old Leo Owens. Owens was shot multiple times. He was taken to Shands Jacksonville where he died. No word on who the men were. Police say it looks like a case of home invasion robbery. A short time later, a man was found shot to death on George Road in Arlington. According to police, someone driving by saw 28-year-old Keenan Tillis lying on the side of the road and reported it to police. They tell us Tillis had been shot in the upper body. He was pronounced dead at the scene. So far, police have no suspects in custody. We have a WTEV follow-up on a man found dead yesterday in a north side cul-de-sac. We now know the name of the victim. 36-year-old Tony Taylor was found shot to death in this Lexus early yesterday morning at the 1300 block of Biscayne Court. So far, no suspects are in custody. A north side man is behind bars. Police tell us he tried to rob a fast food restaurant in Bay Meadows. 
Terrence Platts was arrested last night as, as he was attempting to rob the McDonald's. According to police, an officer responded to a 911 call. When he entered the store, the officer heard Platts screaming in the office. The officer went behind the counter and saw Platts trying to rob the store. Police ordered Platts to get to the ground, and they confiscated his weapon. Platts has been charged with armed robbery. So far, bond has not yet been set. A Florida Department of Law Enforcement officer is being recognized by Attorney General John Ashcroft today. Special Agent John Fortier is being That's awarded today in Washington, D.C. for his part in the search for a missing Gilcrest County girl. The 10-year-old girl was taken from the driveway of her home in March of last year. She was held captive for three days before being released at a Gainesville Walmart. Fortier coordinated more than 100 officers in the search for the girl. Her alleged captor, James Johnson, was arrested. A burn ban is in place for people in Putnam County. Outdoor burning is not allowed, which means no bonfires, burn barrels, campfires, or fireworks. Dry conditions and no rain have made wildfires a major threat. Anyone caught violating the burn ban could face criminal charges and have to pay a fine. A Baker County fire turned out to be arson. Fire crews spent much of yesterday putting out the blaze that grew to 300 acres. One fire broke out yesterday morning, then a second fire was, was set soon after. Both fires are now out. No evacuations were ordered and no one was hurt. Firefighters continue to monitor dozens of fires around Florida. A 1,400-acre wildfire near Walt Disney World is now 80% contained, but continues to send smoke into Orlando theme parks. Fire crews in Pensacola now have an 1,100-acre fire at 95% contained, and two huge fires are burning in Collier County. There have been about 2,700 wildfires in Florida since the beginning of the year. An early morning fire destroyed a motel on Clearwater Beach and caused two others to be evacuated. The blaze swept through the Ramada Limited Motel in less than two hours, destroying the building. Many of the guests waited through much of the morning to find out if any of their belongings could be salvaged. All of the guests escaped unharmed, but two firefighters were hurt. One was injured when the roof fell on him, another suffered from dehydration. But officials say both will be fine. The Red Cross is now helping those displaced guests. Governor Jeb Bush made the fight against cancer a little easier. Today he was in town to sign an official bill for the Mary Broken Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program. The bill is part of a comprehensive package of family initiatives to promote the health and well-being of Florida's families. It expands breast and cervical cancer screenings and helps with treatment for low-income women. Each year, thousands of women are diagnosed with breast cancer and cervical cancer, and early detection and treatment is critical. Great start because for, for women that are find the detection, now they'll have uh, get their costs reimbursed. It costs $35,000 to $40,000 on average for cervical cancer or breast cancer to be treated. And if they're treated early, those costs can go down. We can actually save money. And my guess is over the years, we'll expand the program. This bill is one of three the governor signed today. The other bills expand the number of locations where babies can safely be abandoned and creates a mandatory criminal sanction for certain parents who fail to pay child Jim support. Coming up on WTEV 47 News. It's time to say goodbye to Star Trek Voyager. We'll have some clips of tonight's series finale. Plus, the First Coast wants to be prepared in the event of a hurricane. We'll take you to the drill next. Show and a trip to the Caribbean. I paid for the entire trip. I looked at it as more of a gift. Judge Joe Brown. Wednesday night at 7 on WTEV 47. Terrence started choking her on my mom's car. A wild family affair. As long as I've known this lady, she has been the most con artist, scheminous woman. She saw you falling all over her mom's car. I know she's lying. Judge Judy. Thursday night at 6 on WTEV 47. Sorrel Fowler owns a Hyundai Accent. I love the accent. It's so cool looking. Sorrel compared the accent to the competition. I researched it on the internet. It comes with the freedom of America's best warranty and so many features. It's no wonder the Accent has become the best-selling car in its class. You get a lot for your money. The Hyundai Accent. At just $8,994, it could be the best choice for you, too. The Hyundai Accent at just $8,994. Your test drive is waiting. Do not adjust your set. Do not call your cable company or shake your head and go, what you see is correct. The Golden Corral Dinner Buffet now has juicy, tender sirloin steaks every day. All you can eat from the buffet, plus all your other buffet favorites. And yes, that's right, incredible all-you-can-eat sirloin steak. 
That's why we call it the Great Steak Buffet. And it's just $7.99. It's the buffet steak lovers have been waiting for. Only at Golden Corral. The completely redesigned Chrysler minivans now come equipped with yet another standard feature. Because Consumer's Digest named Voyager a best buy. And AMCI called Town & Country the best minivan ever. Now get a $2,000 cash allowance on Chrysler minivans. So get to your Chrysler dealer today. Because with award-winning values like these, you'll be the one with something to brag about. If a hurricane were to hit the first coast today, would you be prepared? That scenario turned out to be a very real challenge today for Duval's Emergency Operations Center. The start of hurricane season is just one week away. Reason enough to activate a statewide hurricane drill. They have some deaths and some injuries associated with those tornadoes. One of those uh, tornadoes in the Riverside area went through a mobile home park. We had uh, two deaths. A deadly hurricane has hit the Jacksonville area. Uh, we and now in this exercise, local and federal agencies here at the command center pull together to serve thousands of disaster victims. As a result of being able to do training like this, like we're doing today, it increases our preparedness for a hurricane in Jacksonville. We spend a lot of resources. We spend money and time in being able to prepare, and this training is a part of that. The entire city is represented in this drill, from the JEA, which is dealing with a power outage for 88,000 homes, to fire and rescue to the Duval County Health Department. Their goal is to raise their level of service, learning from real life storms like Hurricane Floyd. Well, our biggest challenge last year was our computer systems, uh, that we have literally thousands of people with special needs that we need to put onto a computer so that at any point in time, based on the geography where they live, we can identify who needs to be transported, who needs to go to a special needs shelter, and so on. So uh, that really is the critical issue that we're working on. Fire Chief Ray Alford says he'd like to see his people improve how they secure their own families before they serve the public. Preparing our folks to prepare themselves. Uh, as the storm is approaching, obviously, we, we would have hoped that all of their loved ones would be out of the area. Officials say realistically there's no way they could guess what could happen during a real disaster. The factors and challenges they deal with are that unpredictable. We can't simulate that chaos, nor we want to on a daily basis. But we try to as much as possible and have the, that type of problems for these folks to solve. And hurricane season officially starts next Friday. Not looking forward to that at all. Not looking forward to it, but uh, the firefighters and all the crews down at the um, at the EOC say they're looking forward to mm -hmm. it. That's why they're pre you know preparing today, and hopefully that uh, we won't uh, face a time when uh, hurricane comes and puts us in jeopardy. Well, also, we had so many problems with Hurricane Floyd. I mean, they can only learn from that, so that is a good thing. Yeah, they said that was a very good mm -hmm. learning tool, and right now they're trying to uh, raise the level of service based on you know what they uh, learned from Hurricane Floyd. Right, something good can come of it, hopefully. Well, still ahead on WTV 47 News, will the weather cooperate with tonight's NSYNC show? Bob Allen has your forecast. Plus, the final episode of Star Trek Voyager airs tonight. We'll give you a sneak peek next. Even though we just turned 60, we're still climbing mountains, trekking through forests, and playing in the mud. And now we're celebrating that heritage during the Jeep anniversary event. Get a 1,000 cash allowance and 0.9% APR financing when you buy a Grand Cherokee. Or returning Daimler Chrysler lessees with preferred credit can lease a two-wheel drive model for just $277 a month. So come celebrate our great past. It'll make for an exciting future. Check one out at your Jeep dealer. For your holiday cookout, Sanderson Farms Fresh Split Fryer Breasts are 99 cents a pound. Select lean and meaty pork spare ribs are only $1.59 a pound. Pick up Harvest Fresh Sweet Yellow Corn, eight ears for $1.68. And don't miss our big sale on Nabisco Snack Crackers and Cookies, $1.99 each. It's Coggin Savings Days now at Nissan at the Avenues. We've got spectacular deals on more than 250 pre-owned Nissans that are absolutely priced to move. And with our 110% low price guarantee, you won't find a better price than the Coggin price. Get over to the Nissan used car capital where $99 down delivers or save up to 50% off the original MSRP on select models. If the Coggin name's not on your car, you paid too much. The Coggin name stands for savings. Coggin. 
Sweecy. Sweetsy. Sweet and speechy. Spicy, spicy. <laughs> Introducing new spicy barbecue strips from KFC. They're sweet and spicy at the same time. Ooh. So how do you describe them? Sweetsy. Spicy. So why is dollar? Honey and smoked jalapeno barbecue sauce on freshly prepared whole white meat strips. Whoa! For a limited time, get side biscuit and three spicy barbecue strips for just $2.99. And for wing lovers, eight wings for just $2.99. They're, uh, uh... Sweet and spicy! Well, it's a sad, sad day for Trekkies. <laughs> the final episode of the Star Trek Voyager airs tonight at 8 o'clock. For seven seasons, the crew of the Voyager, led by Captain Catherine Janeway, played by Kate Mulgrew, has been moving through the galaxy, encountering trouble along the way. In tonight's final episode, called Endgame, the crew is thrust into a distant part of the galaxy. Captain Janeway gets into a deadly confrontation with her arch nemesis, the Borg Queen, as the Delta Quadrant continues their mission to find their way home. Tonight's two-hour final episode can be seen right here on WTEV 47, starting at 8 o'clock. Now, weather with Bob Allen. Folks, I think we must have been in some kind of a time warp last night into the morning hours because the rain that we thought would be here, that I thought would be here, wait, hey, wait a minute. Oh, I forgot. In the true Trekkie and Trekker mode, Director, Captain Saunders, please beam me up. Thank you. In the true mode, of course, of the 25th anniversary of Star Trek, Welcome to WTEV 47 weather. I can't go into today's weather presentation until I at least make some sort of a uh, commentary, personal commentary on the disappointment from not getting any rain last night to the morning. <clears throat> Darn. That feels a little better, but certainly not satisfying. I was as disappointed as you were, folks. The, the rain was there. You saw it yesterday right on our doorstep. Then it moved into a dry atmosphere around the Jacksonville area, then reformed, and it's pouring down south. Right now we're at 85 degrees here. 85 at Jacksonville, 75 St. Augustine, 89 Orlando, and 88 at Ocala, 80 at Miami. Here's our fly-through. This is the best Star Trek stuff we can do. I know it's a disappointment. Look at southern Florida. Clouds and rain. That's the front that was right here yesterday on the west northwest doorstep and drifted through, reorganized in central Florida because it was dry atmosphere that the water moved into above in the first coast region and now it's wet. More moisture started to flow in out of the Gulf of Mexico across southern Florida so you could see how things kind of got together and now it's a solid cloud bank along a frontal system. 86 is the high temperature today that we had, 91 at Ocala, 90 at Orlando, so still some warm temperatures, but it will be cooler tonight and cooler for the next few nights than it has been, and our daytime highs will not be in the 90s, we'll be in the 80s. Here's a couple of lower temperatures, West Palm, Panama City, and Tallahassee at 82, Miami's at 83. Once again, here's that rain, and this is as good as it looked yesterday evening and night just to the west and northwest of us. It's like it just jumped, leapfrogged over, basically, and that's kind of what it did. We're surrounded by water, but once again, as the front moved in, it became diffused, dried out, so to speak, and then once it started traveling again towards southern Florida, the moisture out ahead of the front started gathering in, and now there's a lot of rain down there, rain that we should have had. Part of it belonged to us. It's a conspiracy. Over the next 24 hours, that cold front will continue to move to the east and southeast, Chance of rain? Well, it's still going to be in southern Florida. We'll have beautiful weather and nice temperatures in the 80s. Hey, can they beam me out? No? Okay, just to beam in? Shucks. That's kind of cool. Swirling around is the... Uh... <laughs> it's good. Captain Sanders is good. We'll take him on our flights. Swirling around is the center of that low pressure system. Then the cold front goes way out. And look at that, all the way down northeast to southeast. And this is going to be stuck. So plenty of rain for the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and Tennessee Valley over the next couple of days. Meanwhile, we will stay dry. Here's the way it looks for the weekend. Then some scattered thunderstorms, all we can hope for in the southeast and Gulf Coast region. Afternoon, 30% chance. Cool and unsettled around the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes. Everywhere else looking pretty good except for the extreme Pacific Northwest. We'll have a clear sky overnight tonight. Cooler with a temperature around 60. Beach temperature 64. We'll have a light wind. This will be a very pretty night. For tomorrow, sunshine and warm. Not hot, 
Upper 80s for the daytime high in the city. Mid 80s at the beach with an east wind at 10. The extended forecast Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Partly cloudy weather, 30% chance of some afternoon or evening showers or thunderstorms. Upper 80s at the daytime high, mid to upper 60s the nighttime low. So that means Monday will be the same forecast as Sunday, the Memorial Weekend. And then north, northeast winds tonight, 10 to 15 knots, seas 35 feet, inland water smooth. And just to let you know, the treasure chest of Hospice Northeast, they are celebrating the 25th anniversary of Star Trek by raffling off a beautiful 3D set, a chess set. Stop by there and pick up a raffle ticket. And of course, you'll be supporting Northeast Hospice. Have a great evening. Back to Russell and Beverly. All right, thanks a lot, Bob. That's Bob beaming out. That was cool the way mm -hmm. they did that, you know. I'm we sure should do that every night. <laughs> I, I wish. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people will want to be beamed up over at Ontel Stadium. We'll check back in with Carl Torp, who's live at Ontel for NSYNC Mania. And a University of Florida star is being investigated tonight. Ryan has the latest from Gainesville. Next in sports. Right now, Chevy's making a lot of noise about the new 2001 Tahoe LS. Lease one for as low as $389 a month, with $3,614 due at lease signing. Residency restrictions apply. Call for important lease details. Tahoe, as low as $389 a month. Now at your Chevy dealer. You have it pictured in your mind. It's easier than ever with our Memorial Day preview prices and 12 months no interest financing. Haverty's. Picture the possibilities. Some people buy a Saturn because they get a lot for their money. Others get one because it's fun to drive. In fact, there are plenty of good reasons to own a Saturn. We ought to know. We've been making them for 10 years. Come to think of it, that's another reason right there. The Saturn 10-year anniversary. Get 0.9% APR for 60 months on all 2001 Saturns. For residency and other restrictions, see participating retailer. As fans everywhere prepare for game day, we introduce new Publix Premium Certified Beef. Leaner, tastier, more tender steaks, painstakingly inspected by the USDA, and by us to guarantee they meet the highest standards our meat has ever had to meet. Fellas, come September, we do this for real. Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Available now at Publix. Now sports with Ryan Elijah. Good evening, everybody. Still stinging from the loss of Kwame Brown, the Gator basketball program now dealing with another potential setback tonight. Teddy Dupay is being investigated by the university for dealing with a bookmaker and one that is allegedly right here from Jacksonville, though that is being disputed tonight. Now, according to a school official, Dupay has not been suspended, but will face disciplinary action if found guilty. It is unknown exactly what involvement Teddy had with the bookmaker, if any. The school cannot comment other than to confirm there is an investigation. Dupay, the only scholarship player not at a workout yesterday, losing Dupay, of course, would be a tremendous blow to the Gators. And when it rains, it pours. A lady Gator has been arrested tonight. Naomi Mobley was charged with domestic battery after getting into a spat with her ex-girlfriend. We will move on from there. Well, let's go to some uh, positive sports news now. Larry Brown is your overwhelming choice as the NBA's coach of the year. It's his first in 18 years of coaching in the NBA. It certainly does not hurt that he has Allen Iverson. Meanwhile, it looks like Gary Williams will finish his career in Maryland as we See a very subdued Brown, and right there is Williams today. The Terps extending his contract through the year 2008. Well, to not have the drama of yesterday's realignment, but the NFL owners did approve a change today that would allow teams to wait until Sunday to designate its inactive players. Previously, teams had to be required to deactivate on Friday, so a very subtle change out of the owners' meetings. Well, both JU and UNF got their campus send-off parties today. For JU, a much shorter bus ride. They will go to Tallahassee. The Dolphins will work out tomorrow at Dick Hauser Stadium before squaring off with those Auburn Tigers on Friday afternoon. I think uh, conference tournament really, uh, we played really well as a team. Uh, we really picked each other up and, and did the right things, did the little things to win the ball games. 
And uh, we're going over to Tallahassee, and uh, we're, we're very well prepared. We'll, we have confidence in our game plan, and now we're just going over there and do it. We know that we have a big heart. We know that we have, uh, you know, a stick to uh, amongst the, the players. They're not going to give in, and, and uh, that's what's going to make us dangerous in this tournament. Hey, let's check in on the best team in baseball. You betcha. The Seattle Mariners. Matinee was a twins day score tied at three, but Brett Boone off the right field wall bringing in the best import of the season. A hero to tie it at four in the eighth. And David Bell will untie it. Ems win it. 5-4. Certainly a great story in Major League Baseball chalking up another win today. And we finish with an oversized poster is what all you will see of tennis fans when Mary Pierce is at the French Open because today the defending champ saying au revoir to the tourney less than a week before it starts. Pierce cited a back injury for her withdrawal, so certainly not the news they wanted at the French Open. She won in 19 for the first French woman since 1967 to win the French Open. She will not defend her title. That's it for sports. As we saw before, Altel Stadium is filling up with NSYNC fans. That's right, and the show gets underway in about a half hour. WTV 47's Carl Torp joins us again. And Carl, are you surviving in that swarm of NSYNC fans? <laughs> All those girls. Barely, barely out here. It's, it's been sort of tough out here, I must say. There are a lot of little kids really frantic about this show. Now, let me gonna show you something right here. This is, it says Pop Odyssey 2001 on the side, and this is the official NSYNC fan bus. I guess that title was actually maybe made up, but there's sort of an interesting story behind this, this bus. And here to tell us this is the uh, RV's owner, this yeah. is Meredith, and Meredith, you're from Salt Lake City, right? Yes, that's right. Um, actually, last tour, the No Strings Attached tour, uh, we tried to follow it as much as we could, and when we were in L.A. for one of the concerts, we attended The Price is Right, and I actually ended up winning the motorhome by choosing five because there's five members of NSYNC, of course. Uh, so now we just decided to keep the motorhome against the advice of many because it's worth so much, but uh, we're going to keep it and follow the Pop Odyssey tour. And to pay for it, we're looking for corporate sponsorship because uh, we can advertise on the side of the banner. So we have a couple sponsors signed on, but um, we're going to be kind of getting city to city, getting the money together. And your friend who's making this voyage with you is Winter, <laughs> and you were right there on The Price is Right with Bob Barker and Meredith when all this went down. I saw you jumping around the videotape yeah. as well. Uh, what's it going to be like to uh, follow this entire tour? Well, we are so excited. Um, like she said, you know, we went to seven shows on the last tour, and you know, we couldn't get enough of that. And just, you know, we drove from Salt Lake to Jacksonville straight through, and that was just so amazing. We got to go through so many awesome cities, and we can't wait for the show tonight. We are so excited. We'll be the ones sobbing in the front. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both very much. Good luck to them. They're trying to make this entire voyage Pop Odyssey 2001. Good night, everyone. We'll see you at 10. An in sync motorhome. Imagine that. It'll be a good time. We'll good see night. you tomorrow. If you're shopping for